Hi, good afternoon. Lovely to welcome you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Now, I'm very conscious that it's literally the first day of your new term and students are returning to your colleges. So how is that? Let's start with that. Eureka, do you want us to kick off on that one? Well, it's, it's fantastic to have all the students back. You know, like you said, Chris, it's the second day of our term. Uh, and it's just amazing to see the energy, the positive attitude of all the students coming back. It's like coming home. You know, it's the HIM family, we call it. And it truly is a feeling of family atmosphere uh, of seeing all the teachers, of seeing each other. You know, some students have been on an internship for about six, eight months. So they've been away from school for a while. And it's just catching up with friends, with the teachers, with the, the operations team. It's, it's a great energy. It's, it's a fantastic feeling. Oh, and I think it's the same for, for my colleagues, Max and Dominic. Max? It absolutely is. I, I couldn't share the sentiment more, uh, as Ulrike expressed it. It's, it's about family. It's about homecoming. And uh, we have, we've been receiving our students going back about a week just to make sure they're safely coming back. And, and the excitement of seeing the team come back online again on campus yeah. and, and, you know, and then see the students coming in. They're excited. They're, they're, they're really going on. Finally, we're here. And the, the energy and the positive mood about it is really on the top. And we simply hope that it continues. And we are very excited about it. That's good. Dominic? Uh, the, the excitement's there. Um, it's great to have the orientations uh, kicking off. But... Um, it's uh, mooted in uh, some ways because of the, the distancing and uh, the welcome parties that are, are not to be. Um, and um, I'm finding as a school leader that uh, you're welcoming with your open arms and, and, and uh, people are excited just as my colleagues have described. But then again, um, we're wearing two hats, um, leading the schools, uh, encouraging also distancing at all times, uh, mask wearing, um, and trying to um, curb youthful enthusiasm um, of our charges. Well, I mean, it's good that you touched on that, because obviously last week EHL hit the headlines uh, with the parties that led to 2,500 people being isolated. Is this a, how big a problem is this? Because young people will be young people, which I understand. We've seen the same in the UK. But it's, it's, I'll have a quick go at that one um, first because it was very interesting for me. I've been in the country um, probably 13 days now. I arrived, um, I was president of a college in Australia. So I'm going through orientation um, my, myself here uh, with, the, with the students. Um, yet, if, if you're talking about um, the impact of uh, that news item, I had calls um, and WhatsApp messages from uh, Singapore and uh, Australia before I saw it uh, on the Swiss news. So, um, you know, Ecole Hotelier Lausanne um, is, is, is big news to the uh, um, hospitality educators around the world. And, and that kind of uh, amazed me that that story would get so big. Max? I, I really think that obviously these things could happen. Uh, we have the rules and regulations uh, fully on board. The team is fully equipped and, and everything, the facilities has been set up to, to have the measures in place so that the, to create not only the safe feeling, but to truly create that safe environment and you know, focused on health and well-being. And we want that to become that routine so that we can step away from that and really focus on the teaching and the learning experience that's on campus. So of course things could happen. What we really emphasize and going back again to the idea of the family, we try to emphasize the trust in, and the teamwork in terms of the faculty coming together with the students so that there is no misunderstanding in terms of if we wanna keep the campus safe, we need to do it in concert in, as a one team together and no one can falter within those lines. So far, we were able to keep it in Q1, and then we went on the online situation, and the experience obviously was different. So I, I think the students also have the understanding that they don't want to go back to the VLE, to the online learning only experience. And so they, they're here excited to have the new experience. And I really believe that 
in order to make that happen, this teamwork needs to happen, but the students appreciate and understand that. And we trust in that relationship to work in order to be as perfect as possible. So we have very rigid uh, recommendations and expectations, and we will face every single uh, issue and matter that comes up very promptly and firmly. But I believe that that trust which connects to the idea of hospitality and education hand in hand is there and hopefully we can manage to keep it going until this idea of the COVID and whatever risks that the future will bring is more standardized and under control, hopefully. Yeah, yeah I absolutely I agree with Max. We've obviously had to change uh, some of the operational things here uh, in school in all of our campuses, but the students are very understanding. You know, they, even if we've had to cancel what used to be welcome parties or welcome dinners. You know, we had icebreakers uh, previously. Uh, they do absolutely understand and appreciate the reason why we had to cancel these uh, this term. Um, and like Mike said, it's a team effort. You know, uh, the students and the school management, we are working together uh, to make things run as smoothly as possible in school for the next term and semesters. And when we were talking earlier, Eureka, you're talking about obviously the responsibility of trust that parents yeah. even in you as well. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I think for both Dominic and Max and myself, you know, just seeing all the students coming back, um, knowing that we have all the precautionary measures in place, traveling from hours, you know, complicated transfers and trains and planes and, 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 and making the effort of being here, knowing uh, that they'll have a good experience, they'll have still quality education, and for the parents as well, you know, sending their children to Switzerland, knowing that we'll look after them, um, you know, as, as much as we can. It, it is a nice feeling, and absolutely, there is trust there. Uh, that's very good. The, the, is the student experience going to change now? That's, that's where's the real point, in terms of how the students look at education as well. Is that, are you seeing any changes in that? Because it must have been a very strange year for them as well, isn't it? Well, yes, but that's the beauty of hospitality, I think, you know, that if we are agile, we are innovative, you know, we can adapt quickly. Uh, that's what we've been teaching the students in class, and now we're actually living it, you know, so the students are embracing it. And there's some things that have changed, uh, for instance, with exams, you know, assignments, you don't have those written exams, final exams, we're being more uh, creative in the way we assess students through case studies or through presentations that you can do via Zoom or online. And I think for all of our campuses, we're engaging industry partners more. You know, Zoom has allowed us to bring so many more partners into the classroom uh, via Zoom. You know, 30 minutes, an hour, much, much more connection with the industry than I think we had before, you know, oh, we have a GM, for instance, last term, general manager at uh, one of the resorts in Yucatan in Mexico. You know, before we would have said, oh no, that's too complicated. He's not gonna come, it's flying. He's been joining our resort management class twice already, you know, just like this. And it just brings another sense um, of involvement for, to the students. Uh, so, yeah, I think it, it's enhanced the way we deliver the courses. Absolutely. It's, it's pushed us to think outside the box. Uh, and and we, we have virtual industry guests, yep. virtual open days, virtual scholarships, virtual alumni meetings. Um, I find it very interesting for uh, management of faculty um, that... Uh, the teachers become more facilitators rather than lecturers at times. And so for different folk, that's been um, a, a plus or something they've had to uh, catch up with. But um, I think, Chris, the, the fact of the matter is, is that um, education itself is irrevocably changed um, after this. If you, if you look at students that are um, in a traditional university setting taking four uh, units, um, they'll take, they'll choose in the future, even when the vaccine comes to take two and take two online, maybe. Uh, and, uh, this is reflected, uh, throughout the world, but in, in, in our world, uh, here, 
when the vaccine comes, things, things will change um, in the way we go about um, delivering uh, classes. Um, however, when you see the joy of the students coming back this week under strict circumstances, um, human interaction seems to be the best uh, in, in our uh, elite brand of hospitality education. Yeah, that's really interesting. We'll come back on that. Max, your thoughts on this? I, I fully agree with my colleagues. And, and I think it's, it's also a sense of ownership by the students that they realize more now, since what, considering what they've been going through in the past year, really, six months especially, that they need to take ownership of what, how they want to lay, learn and, and in which way and what. And I believe that the expectation then is more on the side of the educators to be able to be much more specific and not simply offering something that randomly is virtually available virtually on any platform. We need to be unique, we need to be special, we need to deliver value that goes beyond simply an online availability which you can just search online and get. So that experience of combining what's online and what we offer in a real world experience really on campuses <clears throat> and within the industry, bringing that together I think is what makes all of our uh, schools across the board of Swiss Education Group unique. Yep. And I think the students now have that expectation and starting to appreciate that on a different level while also having the understanding and, and sort of the empathy for the complications it, it presents. So now that we are having students coming in, some are on quarantine still. Some are still have to, having to follow some classes online. It's not perfect. It's not about being perfect. You know, nothing will ever be perfect, but they do understand that that ambition and authentic drive towards the perfect delivery and growth is there on the side of the faculty. And the expectation is there for the students to also jump on board and, and follow that journey together with us. So how have you, how has this, this whole period of time changed the way you think about things? Max, you want to start, start with you that one? I mean, honestly, I, I believe that everything that the world is focusing on now has become much more specific, much more specialized, and in a way, whether positively or negatively, COVID situation has led to a fact that mediocrity is not accepted anymore in many different areas. And so people as a whole generation expect more, expect better experiences and expect more excellence overall. And, and I think the ones and, and, you know, who embrace that more, even as educators, we as well, if we embrace that more and aim towards a higher level of excellence, that will be the focus in the future. And I think the, whatever we call the new normal will be groups, businesses, individuals, students, and, and, and educators focusing on being truly unique in what they offer and have to offer as a whole. And that will lift us up towards a new reality altogether. So it is exciting, even though it has truly crippled the world as we see it, and it continues to do so. Eureka? Yes, no, I absolutely have the same sentiments that, that Mike said. It, um, you know, it is the younger generation that are going to make these changes, you know, absolutely. Uh, Dominic, I'm conscious you've obviously come from Australia as well. You must see two, almost two different cultures during this period as well, have you? Um, coming to, uh, yeah, I mean, I had to get permission to leave Australia from my government and except for the things that happened in uh, Victoria, um, closing the borders early uh, has worked. That There were no new cases in my home state of New South Wales for the last couple of days. Um, and um, there's a sense it's a little bit more liberal um, over here. Um, have it, having said that, that, that's talking at it from a, a general country to uh, country level. I mean, I, I, I uh, allotted four hours time at Zurich Airport uh, because I thought I'd be questioned, tested and, and goodness knows what. And, and I was through in 40 minutes, um, you know. Um, I was coming from a country that was considered uh, very low risk and, and, and they were very professional there. Um, but um, the, uh, the message, um, the, the, the strictness of uh, you must wear your mask in a, a public place, you, you must wash your hands. Um, if you're going to pick up a plate, you have a, a, a plastic glove. 
um, in, in, in co um, and just the, the general um, demeanor or ethos that has been pushed out by the campus leaders uh, makes you realize that um, you know we're, we're trying our best to negate uh, every possibility uh, of, of something happening uh, like happened in uh, Lausanne and, and um, uh, you know uh, our CEO gathered us all together um, regularly to, to, to uh, swap stories and, and keep up the motivation to deliver world-class um, uh, new normal education under um, uh, uh, under the coronavirus uh, situation that we find ourselves in. Pandemic conditions, you know. Oh, I understand that. So what's going to be the legacy of this period of time? I mean, you're obviously talking about world class and we're all going to raise the standards, which is good in itself. What else is going to come through this period as a result, do you think? Eureka? I think just, um, you know, that we are able to adapt and adjust. I think uh, that we are agile. Uh, we haven't just all kind of become uh, frozen and, and what do we do now and, and, and a panic, uh, you know, we, we've addressed it. Uh, we have the measures in place, but we move on. We move forward. Uh, we find different ways of delivering the courses, delivering the classes, uh, high level, world education, uh, but adapting quickly, you know, it's not a frozen. And I think that's, if you look at all the hospitality schools, I think that's what all of us have been doing. I mean, none have kind of gone, oh goodness, we now have to close for the next year and, and see you next year sometime, hopefully. No, it's just, okay, we deliver this, we deliver that. We involve the faculty, we involve the students. So there's much, much more collaboration, I think. And like Mike said before, teamwork, right? And finding new ways of um, getting the students to graduate and to finding uh, positions. Yeah, if I might jump in there, I mean, Ulrika, I think uh, the agility of it all uh, is true. If you look at the state universities or the, uh, the, the institutions that are heavily government uh, funded, it's in the too hard basket. And uh, let's all wait until uh, next year. Certainly, mm -hmm. that's been the approach of some of the large universities uh, down under. But um, we're from the hospitality industry when a bus arrives at your um, uh, at your restaurant um, at five minutes to eight with your staff just about to leave can you handle uh, that bus this is in the old days and uh, you bet let, let, let's go for it and so I think <laughs> when you have true. to look at the core professionals throughout the organization that have uh, put their time in um, and are proud to be uh, hoteliers and, and, and uh, live this life of hotellerie, then, um, then you bet they're agile, they're super agile. Yeah. And that's kind of uh, reflected in our ethos of trying to um, force forward the new normal. Yeah, we get things done. Max? You know, emotional intelligence and empathy it's one of the core elements of what we call the hospitality inter uh, industry. Now, combine that to what's happening right now around the world and what is required to have that thick skin to be able to take quick decisions and change quickly and welcome and embrace change. At the same time, being innovative in what you do, just as uh, we were talking about last time around about the hospitality tour that I was going to and I was discovering you know, the best successful properties were really adapting quickly, coming up with new ideas constantly to deliver a better experience. And then also being entrepreneurial about everything they do. I think that's something that's coming up. So as a whole, if I were to sum it up and combine it to with what hospitality is going toward as transferability of all the skills and the values that has been generally considered as values of hospitality, and it's being applied to every single industry and business scene out there for them to be able to survive. So I think there's a lot of concerns out there and I know we're gonna overall talk about this. There's a lot of concerns out there about hospitality or the industry dying, 
And I'd like to turn, turn that around and say, in fact, the world of hospitality is expanding globally into every single industry. Businesses are, are starting to realize and understand that these people who have these skills and experiences are able to truly jump on board and create value and make a difference out there. And so I think that it will just completely shift everything around. And that's why I think the Swiss Education Group now really clearly speaks about being a business and hospitality educator, the largest in Switzerland, and as a whole, really offering a value that is way beyond just hotels or what we would traditionally call the hospitality industry. So I think that is a very exciting change and, and that opportunities and potential for our students and everybody jumping on board on this or having the experience will be tremendous if we have that thick skin and ability to, to withstand what's going on right now. I mean, look, I agree with you. I think this is an interesting moment. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this to actually really present the importance of hospitality education. Because in this moment, when everyone talks about compassion, empathy, care, hospitality education really is something that all businesses can learn from. Absolutely. Um, and actually, is this the time to really present hospitality education to all schools, that this is a really great career route and a good yeah. education piece? No, Dominic, your thoughts on that? Um, I, I, my, my thoughts, uh, my, my thoughts go to the, the, the students as well, and, and I don't want to take this off track here, but but um, you know the resilience of our of our young people. We have some that are gung ho and, and uh, make that change, but we're also checking on the students that perhaps. Um, uh, we've been through some things in our life. Uh, we, we get to be this ripe old age that we are right now. But uh, for a lot of these uh, youngsters, it's the first time they faced um, a real ad adversity. And so I just wanted to just, uh, you know, pay respect to the sort of uh, mental health uh, uh, pickups that, that, that the counsellors are doing as we go, go forward with this. But from a, a, a transformational uh, point of view, yes, uh, we're still, you know, we, we affect, uh, it's not just in the classroom or in the Zoom classroom or, or whatever's happening. It, it's, uh, it, it's, a trans, it's a living learning um, unit outside of the classroom. And that's what uh, our colleges uh, are known for. And, and so I think holistically, um, we're dealing with transforming these uh, young people in, in what, what has been a shock. Even if I look at my own um, adult children, uh, 23 and 25 years old, they had uh, trouble coming to grips early on uh, with, with what was happening, whereas some of us had been through some stuff before, you know, and, and I think that's where um, our schools are. I, I'm very pleased with the way that we... Uh, we, we deal with the students uh, on that matter of, of, of their sort of mental toughness or mental well-being. Eureka? Uh, yes, no, absolutely. Um, that is an important part uh, of the education. Well, you're not just making sure, uh, like Mike said, the emotional intelligence part is, is there as well. But uh, just to go back, you know, it's not only the hospitality education that is transforming. I think also a lot of the businesses are adapting you know, the amount, uh, part of the curriculum in all our schools is internships. You know, the students need to go out and do an internship. Uh, but it's interesting how the industry are changing. Now they call them remote ships, right? So the students can be at home. You know, they, it's a re an internship, but at home, it's a remote ship. And they get different types of responsibilities. You know, it might be uh, preparing a marketing plan or doing some research, uh, so the industry are wanting to involve the students in a different way. You don't actually have to go somewhere. You are giving responsibilities as a student of working with a company uh, in, in different projects uh, related. Has that to worked that field. well? Interest. Has that worked well? Yes, absolutely. At the moment, we've had three. I mean, for HIM, I can talk for Hotel Institute Montreux. We've had three students, and it's worked very, very well. They they loved the experience. You know, they were home. And they had to check in daily with their manager, who was then in another location. They were giving specific tasks, and they had to achieve these tasks. And it went very, very well. Uh, the students uh, just joined us this week. They loved the experience. 
uh, they love the, the thought of having been given responsibilities, you know, and, and again, going back to the trust, you know, you were at home, uh, we gave you the responsibility, so there, there was a sense of pride, you know, I, I managed this, I did this, and they got great feedback from the partners. Uh, and, and again, the industry partners loved of having that extra help, even though it's not physically there. So now remote ships is, is, is a thing. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And are you seeing new trends come through, new disciplines come through? Because I know uh, I've sort of, you mentioned before that, you know, in Italy, there's apparently a great rise in vegetarianism. In the UK, we're all into sustainability in a major way, which I'm sure everyone in the world is. But yeah. not, ju not just in terms of environment, in terms of social and cultural and communities. Yep. As well. Are you seeing different focuses come to the fore at this point? I think Max is able to talk that, you know, you have that in your, <laughs> your program. <laughs> Well, well, you know, on, on that side, I mean, of course, we just recently launched a, a vegan and vegetarian program, which expands from three to six months, which has been delivered already for a term very successfully. Sustainability in the true sense, because obviously I would, if you would ask me personally, I would say sustainability has just been used for any single purpose out there, especially also politically. But now it's becoming more of that real thought about what is sustainability and how can we create businesses and, and operations that truly focus on that in its real sense. And that's what I'm seeing coming through right now as well in the courses we're delivering in, and in how the demand out there and also in everything we do on the Culinary Arts Academy side, it's focusing. I mean, for instance, here in Lucerne, we have the pastry and chocolate arts and a big chunk of that element is understanding the farm to table aspect. How do you source the products and raw materials properly? How do you go away from using too much sugar and, and, and unhealthy products and really turn it to, to ship around in terms of focusing on health, well-being? And I think that is a healthy way of going forward while also taking this step towards how can I make a difference? You know, I always think about the fact that for a while now, the world has been focusing a lot on just bring it on. I want to have a great experience. And, and you know, if, if not, I'm just a victim and I want to, you know, just, just be served. But I think we go back to, to what a great man once says, but it asks not what your country, but let's say what the world can do for you, but what you can do for the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that is starting to go hand in hand with this idea of ownership and asking and understanding what is the true value and unique value that I can offer to the world mm -hmm. in any certain way, in a sustainable way, so that I make a contribution. And thanks to reciprocity around the world, that'll make my life better and my, my journey a much more fulfilling one. And I don't think it would change, Max, don't you agree? I think even if we go back to some kind of new normal, I think that yeah. will stay, don't you think? You know, I hope so, and yeah. in a positive way, and that, that responsibility and taking ownership of your actions is, is something new as well as a whole. Mm. So yeah. no, I, th I think it's been a time of uh, intense personal reflection for, for a lot of people. Um, and, uh, you know, th this will be seen to play out. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy to hear about the success of Ulrika's uh, remote ships, but we're seeing a CB, CBD um, a downtown um, office spaces, rents uh, uh, just go like that. Meanwhile, people are realizing uh, that uh, the daily commute is crazy and, and, and that they can um, uh, move to the country towns um, and set up there. And, and those property prices are, are going through the, through the roof as long as you've got a good internet connection. And, and so everything that Max was talking about um, is, has been accelerated to fruition um, because people have had, had a time to really look in on themselves and, and see what's important from a, a quality of, of life uh, perspective. Having said that, there are political leaders that are telling uh, nations to uh, get out from under the blanket and, and, and get back to work as, as things improve. But uh, I, I think that the world um, for, for these sort of ethical uh, situations has had a good think. And uh, maybe we're going to do some, uh, things different into the future we get that um, vibe and push and feeling from our students. And look, out of interest, how is Switzerland coping with this whole situation? Because we haven't really touched on that. 
because we don't hear much about it, which is probably a good thing in some ways, because it probably means there's less drama going on. Max, do you want to start with that one? Uh, you know, a, a few months, I think just, just hardly a month or so ago, it was ranked as the number one safest country in the world in terms of COVID situation, for sure. And I have to share that sentiment. And uh, we were sharing, talking about that before, both me and Norika being from Sweden and the approach Sweden has taken versus many other countries. And, and I, uh, at the beginning, we were concerned. Uh, and it turns out that it has, especially for the mental well-being of people and the population, in a way, it has worked out. I have to, you know, I'm not Swiss in any way, but I truly respect and celebrate Switzerland for the way they've been able to, from day one, through fact and science and through very global, careful decisions, been able to approach this from day one very carefully. And, and now it seems as if they are considering the reopening in a very good way and they have, and people are able to exercise their business and also have some fun, but always taking that responsibility. And, and the residents here are to a great deal and the majority of them really respecting that. So that yeah. mutual ownership and the sense of family that we were talking about on the campus level, I think really every single day in traffic, in, in, you know, in shops, in anywhere you go, in businesses, people respect that. They keep the distance and personal hygiene. And because of that mutual respect, I sincerely believe that Switzerland as a country is getting ahead step by step and becoming a do I dare say, and my calls are here to me, one of the number one destinations for foreign studies in the world. No, I agree with you. I agree, definitely agree with you, Max. You know, the population, uh, the respect towards each other, the respect towards the procedures that are in place. Uh, it wouldn't have worked, again, if we didn't all just follow uh, the rules that are in place. You know, like Max said, in every shop, if you go to the bank, if you go to the train, everybody's following um, the precautionary measures that are in place in Switzerland as a country. Yeah, yeah there doesn't seem to be the mask debate that there is in, in, in other countries. No. Uh, that seems to be a moot point here. And uh, when you get on the trains, everyone's masked up. Um, you, you know, uh, we are dealing in an arena where uh, English business and uh, hospitality education is, is how we teach. That means that uh, the major markets where parents look to put their students uh, from around the world, US, UK, um, uh, there's also New Zealand and Canada that are probably quite uh, alluring as well. Um, but you've got uh, rule regulated uh, Switzerland there uh, as well. Um, I think there was a good point uh, mentioned earlier uh, that the way in which the information is conveyed in Switzerland uh, for my short time back here is that it is quite data driven um, and scientific. It's uh, not uh, sensationalistic uh, at all. It's almost uh, dry and academic in the way that the, gov the government uh, bodies put it out, but also the, in the way that the people consume it. Um, and uh, that gives you a sense of uh, the fact that the, the people behind uh, in the organizations, the government organizations that are caring for us are, are basing this uh, on this data-driven science. And, and that makes me feel more comfortable um, as the average Joe walking down the street uh, in my mask, having uh, sanitized my hands before I went out with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, look, I'm conscious of time. Final question. Hopes and concerns for the future. Eureka, what's keeping you awake at night and what are your hopes? Uh, well, I mean, the, the hopes is just that, like Mike said before, that we, we can only hope that we continue this momentum of looking after each other, of caring for each other and caring for the environment. You know, that when a new normal uh, happens, that we just don't go back to our old ways and old ways of thinking and, 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 and traditional things, that we continue this phase of uh, thinking outside the box, uh, of moving forward, of being agile, that we just continue, you know, that we continue pushing ourselves to be the best we can be and, and moving forward. That's what I think and I hope we continue with. Thank you. Max? You know, I, I, 
I, I pick it up from, from a Transformer movie, so I shouldn't say that, but uh, they, they kept saying, you know, no sacrifice, no victory. And I sincerely believe that the world has paid a very heavy toll uh, across this past year, since November last year. We are just about to get reached the one year mark. And if this sacrifice uh, is to be counted as something as an investment, then, then we need to consider that there is a tremendous opportunity for the world to become a better place. Mm. Thanks to this, for people to embrace the change, people to understand the excellence combined with empathy and the toxicity of the world and the divisiveness that we see, you know, being politicized so carefully all over the world goes away and that it turns into something more positive. And in that scene and in that thought, line of thought, we as educators, especially connecting business with hospitality, have a tremendously important role. And I think that the importance of what we do uh, is going to increase uh, by factors that we, we couldn't have been expecting, even though there is a, at the same time a lot of concern about that. I really think that is a sphere to look closer to and, and that the brighter future is there. Because I mean, even though there's been a lot of concern, I think the world as a whole and a lot of families, a lot of people and regions are moving toward something much better. Thank you, Max. Great. Dominic? Um, not much to add uh, uh, to my, from what my learned colleagues have said. Uh, I think we need to keep the discipline up. Um, it, it's like being an athlete and, and you train at a certain level every day. We, we've got to keep the discipline up um, in our communities. Um, but I, I do hope after this period of, of intense introspection, um, I do hope, I, 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 I'm, I'm very hopeful, uh, as Max said, that we'll come out of this uh, being better people and uh, with more attention to a sustainable uh, future. We will do things differently. We won't commute. We won't uh, get on those trains um, and uh, we will work smarter and better. And uh, that, that's all positive. Oh, look, thank you. Look, it's always a delight to talk to the three of you. So thank you for your time today. Thank you for the opportunity, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Chris always good, a luck. Luck. good luck with the new uh, term as well. Thank you. Look after yourself. Thank you. Bye.